Ilaria. So hi all and welcome to this webinar on the Open Air Research Community Dashboard. So I would like to start with a brief presentation on the motivations behind the realization of the dashboard. And then I'll proceed with a, with a live demo. Um, we'll have time for questions at the end of the demo, but if you want, you can write your own questions in the chat, in, in the GoToMeeting chat, if you want. Okay, so let me share the screen. Okay, so why, uh, why have we decided to realize this service? Because we wanted to provide our support, the open air support, um, to three common problems. The first problem is the so-called literature and data deluge. So there are so many research products out there distributed in a variety of sources that is hard for researchers to find research objects of their discipline in a context that facilitates their interpretability and their reuse. So Open Air via the dashboard offers um, the part of the scholarly communication graph that Open Air grows um, the part that is relevant for a given research community. And this graph is participatory, so researchers can help actively to grow it and make it better and, and more complete. The second problem we are addressing is the lack of tools for open science publishing. So we are currently running three pilots with three research infrastructures for the implementation of open science publishing tools. And, and thanks to them, research results can be published by the research infrastructure itself on behalf of its users. So the researchers will use the tools of the research infrastructure to perform their research and the research infrastructure will automatically publish their result. And in this case, the target is not the researcher. The target of the dashboard is not the researcher, but the manager of a research infrastructure or a research initiative. And the same is for the third problem, which is the research impact. So the managers of research initiative and infrastructure would like to monitor the impact of the infrastructure itself um, and to provide numbers and proofs um, of uh, how the infrastructure is useful to the funders, uh, to the current funders, and to the future uh, funders. So uh, you can see that uh, we have mainly two target audience for the research community dashboard, the research communities, which are intended as a group of researchers with common interest and research intents. So they want to publish, they want to share, they want to discover research products. And then we have long-term funded initiatives, which get fundings via different projects over the years, like EG, EGI, RDA, for example, or domain-specific uh, research infrastructures like Elixir, Epos, or Clarin. So even even if the dashboard is in, is in the beta stage, we have examples for both categories. So we have six research communities of different disciplines, including economics, agriculture, fisheries, uh, neuroinformatics, digital humanities. And we also have six um, research initiative or infrastructure. So Instruct Eric, we have EGI, Daria, RDA, Clarin, and Elixir, Elixir Greece. So, we can now proceed um, with the live demo, unless you have um, any questions uh, at this point. 
Okay, I can see the chat does not have any any questions. So not for now. <laughs> no, no, I will proceed with the demo. Then. So um, this is the address for the research community dashboard. So beta.connect.openair.eu. And as you can see, I'm already logged in. And I am a user with superpower. So in my screen, um, you may see communities and functionalities that you as simple users cannot see on your browser. Um, so for here, you can see the list of uh, the list of all communities and infrastructures that are already uh, with us. And for this demo, I'm going to use Neuroinformatics. So this is the main page. Here you can see uh, the Neuroinformatics uh, dashboard. You have a logo. You have the, the name, of course, of the of the community and the list. Of, of keywords, of subjects that are relevant for, for this community. Uh, you have information about who is the curator, who are the manager of the communities, uh, and the number of members. In this section, instead, you can see the number of products that are currently um, associated to the community. So the number of publications, intended as literature, uh, scientific literature products, research data, research software, and other types of research products, the number of projects, and content providers. And here you can also see a preview of the different kind of results uh, that are related to the, uh, to the community. So how, how does, how do research products end up here in the dashboard? Uh, they appear here based on the configuration provided by the community manager. So the manager can see this manage button and if we click it, we go into the administration page of, of the dashboard. So, uh, for the selection of the content that is available by the dashboard, um, this section is uh, the most important. So we can see that we can select the relevant projects, content providers, and subjects. So if we go on projects, we can see the list of projects that the administrator of, the, of this dashboard already selected. And we can add new one by clicking on the plus button. So now we can select the funder among uh, those that are available in open air. So not only the European Commission, as you can see, but also uh, NIH, NSF. Um, we have Science, Science Foundation Ireland, Croatian Science Foundation, uh, different ministries and governments um, of European countries. And this list is not fixed because open air is continuously, um, uh, let's say, taking information about projects uh, from different funders all over Europe and beyond. So let's select for now the European Commission and let's search for a project. We are in neuroinformatics, so I will search for brain and here we can see the projects that match our search and for example i think that this project can be relevant for this community so i can add it so what happens now next time that open air will update the scholarly graph the content all the products that are related to this project will also be added to the dashboard. Okay, then 
The second way to uh, add content to the community is based on the content providers. So here you can see the content providers, so the data sources uh, which provide content which is relevant for the community. These have already been selected by the community manager. And we can add new one by clicking on the plus button. So again, we can make the very same search. So for example, we get this journal called Brain Sciences, uh, which is relevant for the community, and we can add it via the plus button. Mm -hmm. And again, next time OpenAir will update the graph, everything that is collected from this provider will be associated to the community. Then, finally, the subjects. So here you can list all relevant subjects and keywords. OpenAir will look at the keywords in the metadata and article full text and will add the object to the dashboard if any of the term of this list is matched. So as you can see, we have a lot of terms here defined, which are the very same terms that you can see in the, in the main page of the dashboard here. So the community manager can also do much more. He can actually decide what is visible and not visible in the dashboard for all the other normal users, let's say. And this can be done in this section of the menu so if you go to in sorry if you go in activate entities you can decide which entity types of the graph should be visible for example let's suppose i want to hide data sets research data because as a manager i know that i still need to add data repositories to the content provider list for example so i can simply click on the green button here to disable, and everything related to data will be not visible anymore. So if we go back to the normal view, and we of course refresh, now you can see that there are no, no data anymore here in this box, among these boxes, and we cannot see research data in this. And of course, as a manager, I can change my mind and I can reactivate the entity so that users of the dashboard will see again research data. Okay, this activation um, can be also performed at more fine-grained level using the the other section of this menu, so to, um, to enable disable specific pages of the dashboard. So to, to answer um, one of the questions made by Jatranka in, uh, in the chat, uh, only managers can see the administration part of the dashboard, so you cannot access the administration dashboard now because you are not manager of any community. So the next um, the next step is the customization of help text that can be placed in different pages uh, of the dashboard. So for example, I can add uh, a new help text. Let's see, okay, I would like to create, for example, in search publications at the top. I want it before the content and save. So now if we go in this page, which is the one where you can visualize the, uh, the publications, you can see the, the help text here. 
And of course, again, this can be removed. And the help text this should disappear. Did I delete it? Yes. Okay. There we go. Okay. And now the test test text help text does not appear anymore. <clears throat> so let's go back here. So the next menu is manage statistics and chart. Um, so what do we mean by statistics and charts? If you go back to the normal view, you can see here the top monitor link. If you click on monitor, you can see statistics and charts for the different entities, publications, research data, and software. So we have, for example, the numbers of publications to, through the years by access modes, um, publications for projects, and similar statistics are also available for the other types of entities. Um, so and what you can see here, the statistics that you can see, depends on what the manager wants to show. And he can disable or enable the statistics via the administration uh, section of the dashboard. So, for example, I can decide to hide the first graph, publications to the years. So, I just click on the green button, and if I go back to the monitor page, the first graph <coughs> disappeared from the statistics page. Of course, I can change my mind, and I decide that I want to show this graph in the monitor section, but also in the main dashboard page. And in these cases, when both of them are, are selected, we can see that the chart is back here, but we can also find, find it in the main page here. Let's remove it from the dashboard. And, this, and the chart does not appear anymore. So this is a very simple but powerful way to let the manager decide what the users of the community can see. And the last menu item is for the management of claims. So what are claims? Claims are assertions that users that are subscribed to the community can make through the link functionality. So let's see how. So I am a user and I am subscribed to the narrow informatics uh, dashboard. So I can go here, link, and I can add new products to my dashboard, to the dashboard. So I select communities. So you can see that neuroinformatics is already selected because this is the community where I am now. So I click on next. And here I have two options. I can search for results in OpenAir, Crossref, Datasite, Orchid, or all of them together. Or I can do what we call a bulk claiming. So I can upload a CSV uh, in a specific format, which is described here in the information button, where basically you have to add the DOI, um, access mode, and other information. So when you upload such a CSV, the system will automatically um, assign those publications, those data sets, or software, depending on what they are, assign all those product, products to the community. But as I said before, we can also search 
um, for products in these data sources. So if I search for brain, uh, we can see that we have several results in the different uh, sources we have. So this is publications, research data, and software, other research products are um, products already in open air. And in addition, we found five matching products in Postref, 25 in DataSide, and nine in ORCID. So for example, I can decide to add uh, one data set to this dashboard. So I, need, I have to click on the plus. So this means that now this product is available from, uh, from this dashboard. So what happened now to the, to the manager? Because the manager has this page where he can manage claims. And, and the manager here sees the list of claims and can decide to delete them if they're wrong. Um, there is one last functionality that I would like to show you, but I have to select um, a research infrastructure for this case. Uh, okay, so let's go for Platin. Um, in fact, one of the main difference from the functionality point of view uh, among research communities and research initiatives is, is that products for research initiatives are also picked automatically by the open air mining algorithms. So managers of research infrastructures and initiatives can help the open air mining team in setting up the algorithm. So let's go to the management side for, for Clarin. And as you can see now, we also have the menu item and the section for text mining rules. And this interface allows you to create a mining profile that can be used for testing. OK, so Clarin has already its own sample profile where positive, positive keywords are listed together with optional context, which is used uh, by the algorithm to fine-tune itself, basically. So let's click on continue. So in this phase, you can configure the algorithm in terms of recall and precision. Um, high recall means that the algorithm will try to match as much as it can with the possibility of having, of having lots of false positives. And on the other side, we have high precision. In this case, the algorithm will be more strict and it is possible that many positives will not be identified. So the manager can test the configuration on a limited set of full text and play with different strategies to find the best compromise. Then you can also configure other custom rules and configuration op options. So these are, for example, the options for the text preprocessing, where you can also find additional information where needed. And we can try to run it as it is on on nine documents that are already available for for testing. So it needs um, some seconds to run because nine documents uh, is not uh, is not a lot. So the algorithm runs uh, pretty fast. And here we go with the results. So um, eight over nine documents were found related to, to Plarin. And as you can see, you, you have um, the ID 
the in this case it's an archive archive ID of the document and the reason why it matches in this case it's Claria and then you see also the context where this keyword was found so that you can double check that uh, the reference is is correct has been correctly matched so at this point the profile can be saved you can assign a new name also but once it is saved um, the mining team can be informed so that the actual integration in open air can start and the algorithm will be run on all full text that are collected from, from open air. Okay, so um, I think the demo um, is complete. So I open <laughs> the floor to your questions, to your comments. Uh, to any feedback you would like to to share with us because as I said the service is still on beta so we have a lot of time for uh, improvements and we really would like this the service to be useful to to communities therefore the the feedback from researchers and research managers is uh, is fundamental Thank you. Thanks, Alessia. Um, for the participants, I would like to, well, to stress the fact that, okay, so we have a question from Yodranka. Thanks, Yodranka. Well, it's a more a statement than a question. So uh, it will be very useful to establish the research community at the national level. And this is something no one can disagree with, I think. But I'm, I, I have a question on the question then. Um, so these communities that are in the research community dashboard are research communities. So they are thematic. Um, how difficult would it be to uh, create a national community? Hmm. Well, I, I'm not sure if my question is, is clear. I mean, um, these um, co research communities are kind of a transversal communities among well, different organizations and possibly also different countries. Yes, yes, and that's, um, that's the, kind of the, the kind of communities that we would like to serve. So, as I said, we have two, um, two main categories. So, um, the research, the pure, let's say, research communities, which are groups of researchers which who are working on the same topic, so the same discipline or the same research topic. And on the other hand, we have these research initiatives like uh, CLARIN, for example, um, with, which groups researchers of more or less the, the same discipline because it's linguistic studies, but in fact, CLARIN is, is much more. So. Um, I think that um, the idea of having uh, national uh, national communities it's a different way to see it because in this case uh, the discipline will not be the main commonality between researchers but uh, the, na the nationality will be the country where they work, from them, basically. And this is something that uh, we know it is very important. And in fact, we are planning to offer uh, a similar service at the national level. Um, the idea is not to, to call it research community dashboard, but um, we will have something similar um, that let's say, go beyond the idea of national aggregators. Okay. Thanks for your answer, Alessia. And Yadranka has a, another question about how communities are built. 
Oh, our communities are built. Yeah, okay. We are not aiming at building communities. So we are aiming at serving existing communities. And in fact, um, um, when we decide to, to accept a community for, for, a pi for our pilot phase, um, we ask um, the person, the representative person, let's say, to, to explain us how the community is structured. So if there is um, um, a management behind it, or if it's just a group of persons working together uh, with no policies, for example. So uh, communities are built in many different ways. We, we've been working with uh, communities where there are no policies, uh, no best practices, nothing. They were just a group of researchers working together. And together with them, there are other communities which are well structured and that are more uh, advanced in terms also of open science publishing, for example. I hope this reply to Jadranka's question. I hope so. In case not, Jadranka, please um, keep on keep on writing in the chat. Uh, we have a new question by Garrett. Uh, are there any criteria that managers need to follow when adding data to the community attributes, like, uh, for example, what constitutes a content provider? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, probably I forgot to to explain this during the demo. So, content providers, um, the content providers that you can see in the list that you can choose from, are the content providers that are aggregated already aggregated by OpenAI. So you will find there only the content providers that OpenAI already have. Um, of course, there, there could be cases where an important content provider for a community is not, uh, is not yet in open air. And in this case, we invite community manager to let us know um, because it would be very important to establish a connection between this provider and our um, aggregation team in open air so that we can help the provider to become open air compliant because there are some guidelines that need to be followed in order to be um, collected by open air and enter into this network international network of repositories uh, so we are happy to provide support to, to new repository managers to do that Okay, thanks Alessia for replying also to this question. Um, if there is no other questions, I would like to remind you that uh, the webinars are ongoing until Friday and that tomorrow uh, in the afternoon we will have um, a session about open air, um, a question and answer session about open air. So in case you forgot to ask anything about the research community dashboard, you will also have the chance to do this tomorrow. Okay, if there's no other, um, is there anything coming up from the participants? I would like to thank you all, especially Alessia, for being here today and, um, and providing this nice demo of the research community dashboard. And, well, I can leave you go to, well, our next webinar in <laughs> 20 minutes. Thank you, Ilana. thank you all, and if you feel you are um, a member of a community or a representative for a community that would like to try the dashboard and um, 
So please contact Open Air via the Open Air Help Desk, uh, and we can see if we if we can set up a dashboard for for you. Yeah, I think it's very important that communities really test the the community yes. dashboard to exploit all the potential services. Okay. Thanks all, thank you very much. You will find the recordings um, on the Open Air website, let's say next week. Bye all. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Bye.